How important is apprenticeship for a dancer who goes going to go into like a professional career? It's you know, it's very hard to be hired straight out of a school into a company position. That pretty much never happens anymore. Like maybe it used to, but be happy that they cried, but like that means that you've succeeded in your job. Beyond the mirror, reflections of lives beyond the glass. Thank you for coming. Thank of you course. for doing this. Thank you for having me. All right, um, Haley. Yeah, so I'm Haley Tabanati. Um, I dance with Eugene Ballet Company right now, and I've been dancing with them um, for about six years. This is my sixth season six with them. That's crazy. And it's just crazy. It seems like it's really flown by. It does. Um, yeah, it's crazy. I remember when I saw that you were coming, and now it's like yeah. we've been here for like six, seven years. Oh, I know. Yeah. Wow. It's yeah, it's really flown by. Um, but I've enjoyed it so much, like every minute of it. I've really enjoyed dancing um for Eugene Ballet and just being in Oregon. Um but yeah, overall I've been dancing since I was like four years old. Four is when years I started. Old. You know? Obviously that was not like professional or um like ballet focused even. That was just Oh really? Like, yeah, it was just like a little bit of everything. I just started um, with my preschool. Uh, my teacher in preschool, she was also a ballet teacher, or she owned a dance studio. She taught all sorts of styles, and so they incorporated dance into okay. preschool. Um, and so then it was just natural for my parents to keep me in <laughs> dance classes as my like recreational activity. Why, why did you pick ballet and not like these other... Well, venues of dance. I did all the other styles for so long, like up until I was about like 15 years old or something. I did all the other styles and I actually really enjoyed doing uh, like jazz and lyrical and okay. contemporary, like those styles. I feel like I really gravitated towards those ones for a long time. Um, and I would do competitions. I was going to ask you, <laughs> did you do competitions? Like, were you a yeah. Yeah? You were one of those kids? I was one of those kids a little bit. I mean, I think when I see some of the other studios that have competitions, um, like they really focus on the competitions, mm -hmm. like that's their main focus. Um, but I, um, in the studio that I danced with, it was more recreational um, and just like, you know, like building your, uh, your... Um, it, it, it wasn't like... Okay, you guys are going to win and we're going to be the champions of these things. Yeah, it was no, just like, it was just like an additional yeah. way to perform, Okay, right? Like we just like to perform. We like to be on stage. We like to be able to show what we've been learning. And, um, and a competition was just really like an additional way to like bring in extra performances throughout the year. Um, otherwise, you have maybe like a nutcracker that you put on um, and then your like annual recital. And so for those of us who wanted to perform a a little bit more uh, we would have the competition team to join and we'd work on our dances our routines and then we'd bring them out and we'd compete them and if we won oh. something great but if not we didn't really care that care. much because we still like got to be together and we were all Perform. just like really good friends that's very cool yeah i, I never was a competition kid or yeah. anything like that so that word for me is like it's a lot different oh for sure i know <laughs> yeah, but that was a lot of fun. So I did that for a long time um, up until I was like 15. And then I did my first summer intensive um, for ballet Oh, because some of the other girls in the studio had done summer intensives. And I was like, oh, that kind of sounds cool. Like I like dancing and summer is when you're you have a lot of free time. Mm -hmm. So why not just go somewhere for and a couple try. of weeks and just like dance all day? Um, and so I did that. And that just kind of opened my eyes a little more to the ballet world. Like, oh. I feel like I learned a lot in that first, uh, I think it was two weeks, maybe two or three weeks for that summer intensive that I did. Where, um, where was it? It was in San Mateo, California. San Mateo. Okay. Yeah, it was Peninsula Ballet Theater. Okay. Yeah, so they had a small summer intensive. It was really small. Um, I think it was only like five of us. 
Oh, really? Total. So it was really small. They didn't have like a big summer intensive going on. We didn't even have to audition for it. I think we oh. like submitted an application and um, so you were, okay. and that was it. So it was actually really nice. Like it was really like intimate and you got a lot of one-on-one. Which is very um, important sometimes is, on a pretty young age. Yeah, at a, yeah, especially at a younger age when um, I my knowledge of like ballet and the technicalities and everything like it wasn't that um well developed yet Mm -hmm. (laughs) so i had a lot to learn and i think i think that that was really important for me as an individual to have kind of that introduction um into like the professional ballet world and that kind of drew me in and changed my focus towards more ballet i wanted to continue to because you were talking about little teachers, like how mm-hmm. teachers are so important. Yeah. How important do you think is a teacher in your life? And like, do you have somebody that like, it changes the way you thought about ballet or thought about life? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think it's really, really important to have good teachers um, because they are the ones that are going to encourage you to keep going and to keep progressing. Um, and... If you don't have that, I think it's really easy to just kind of fade out of whatever you're doing because you can lose interest or you feel yes. discouraged or like you don't feel like you're doing a good job or you don't feel like you're progressing. And so you kind of have the mindset of, well, if I'm, I'm not good enough, like yeah, what am I doing here? Yeah. If I'm not improving, if I don't feel like I'm doing well at this, like maybe this just isn't for me. Yes. And so maybe I'm just going to stop. So I think having a good teacher... I mean, and that can be different for everyone, what they think a good teacher is. And that just kind of speaks to your individual learning style. Mm -hmm. But for me, like a good teacher is someone that does push you. And sometimes they're a little hard on you. Did you Um, like that? I think I do like that. But there has to be a certain level of encouragement with that, too. And them letting you know that, like, yes, like I do see improvement. I see that you recognize what I'm asking you to do and I see that you are applying it and I want you to do more okay. or I want you to do this as well something like that where they do kind of like you know yeah, kind no, of no. like standing behind your shoulder and like pushing you to do more um that I feel sense. like yeah because then it feels like they really are paying attention to, to you, you. And because they see potential and they mm-hmm. want to bring out more and they want to see you like continue to improve. And so I really like that in a teacher. So to me, that is a good teacher. And I've had several of those, several of those. <laughs> throughout my, yeah, throughout my training and my career. And um, okay, can yeah. you name a few or do you have like somebody that like truly change? Yeah. I mean, there were a couple teachers that I had that we both had yeah. actually <laughs> um, at Gelsey's Academy in New York. Um, Madame Fominique, she was one of them. Yes. Um, and Vera Solovieva, she was really good too. Um, they both just like, they would really push you. Mm-hmm. I think you you can recognize that too yes. because you were in those classes uh-huh. too. <laughs> and like they they were tough on us, but in a way that like made you want to work hard. Yes. Right? Like and yet you just wanted to impress them and just want Yeah. Yeah, you want to better yourself so like for yourself, but also for them. So you can like I agree with you. And I feel like they have that thing that was like Mm -hmm. pushing you but like encourage as well. Yeah. Exactly. So I feel like that was really good through mm-hmm. like the training to yes. have that because um, like that's when you need that extra push is to like take you from like a student to someone that like a company will see and be like, yes, we want to. We want to work with you. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. We want to work with you. I was listening not long ago. Somebody was saying that following your passion is uh-huh. not the best advice, <laughs> which is kind of it was it was interesting. Uh-huh. But what he says is something like. You need to find something that you like Mm -hmm. and then start doing that thing. Uh And when you do it a lot, you're going to start finding passion towards Mm -hmm. it because you are becoming better. Mm -hmm. So, like, I feel like if you have, like, a good teacher that is encouraging you to that, you're going to eventually find that passion and follow that path. That makes a lot of sense. Actually, I haven't heard that um, said before, but, like... Just hearing that, I feel like that does make sense. It makes a lot of sense. Uh, Because, yeah, it makes sense that you would develop a passion for something that you you initially like. Mm -hmm. I feel like you have to, like, start off liking it in the first place. Um, But, yeah, like, 
the more that you dedicate time and energy into it, you find more of a passion and then you're also getting better at it exactly. at the same time. And then the better you are like, oh, I'm good at this. Yes. Like I can keep going. Like I see yeah. my passion. Mm -hmm. Instead of like, I feel like maybe sometimes if you just follow your passion, maybe your passion is singing, but you know, like yeah. <laughs> all that you can do <laughs> is maybe like a karaoke night. Exactly. Um, and like, yeah, like a subpar karaoke night. Yeah, I feel like <laughs> that is my passion, passion and I know that I, I know. it's not my calling. <laughs> right, it's your passion, but not your calling. I feel like that's the difference. Yes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, that's talking funny. a little bit about these, about teachers, mm -hmm. uh, I recently went to watch you guys perform, mm -hmm. which was an amazing show. I oh, truly, truly enjoy. And before the show, you guys have this video about Uh, apprenticeship mm -hmm. and it makes me think how important is apprenticeship for a dancer who goes gonna go into like a professional career yeah. and tell me a little bit more about that like how important yeah. is that in your life and mm -hmm. you went to Oklahoma also as an apprentice mm -hmm. right mm -hmm. so let's see a little bit more yeah so I spent several years um, doing apprenticeships with companies um, it's you know, it's very hard to be hired straight out of a school into a company position that mm -hmm. pretty much never happens anymore. Like maybe it used to, but the dance world has just grown so much. Um, so there's so much demand for it, but yes. only so many spots available. So it's, um, yeah, almost unheard of to just get a company position right away out of a school. Um, so that's kind of the transition is being hired first as a like a trainee a or trainee, an apprentice yes. or an aspirant like whatever the company happens Colsey. to call that position um so i started out like uh with two years at oklahoma city mm -hmm. as an apprentice um and i feel like that was really important because that kind of gives you Uh, an idea of what company life is because mm -hmm. I had never been with a company before that was my first experience a real experience in a company yeah, exactly and so like you're able to join it um, and just see kind of what it's about and like you get to be included and involved and you're mm -hmm. cast in things but you're you know you're not like the star of the show you're yes. not like doing absolutely everything but you are included and you are involved um and so i think that that helps you grow a lot as a dancer um and hopefully like gain some confidence yes. and just understand how the company life works a little bit better um otherwise i feel like if you just get thrown into a company right off the bat and you might not understand how it works and you like hit that wall Yeah, yeah, it, it can just be like not what you were expecting. expecting and then you know it can change your whole attitude towards everything. Totally. Um, yeah, so I feel like it's really important to get that experience as an apprentice um prior to being hired as a dancer so you can go into a full company position if that's what you end up wanting to do feeling more confident mm -hmm. and like having some more experience of yeah. like company and professional um, performing and rehearsals and, and all of that. Totally. Yeah. I also feel like it's kind of like getting you not in the right place, but putting the expectations at the right level. Mm -hmm. Because sometimes also like if, for example, you might be like a little prodigy or something that is very good. That's a very good point. And then you go into a company, but you are an aspiring. And then you think like, oh, but I'm better than the principal. Like, what am I not doing this? Right. So it's like, no, you are not there because... It's not because you cannot do it. It's because mm -hmm. we want you to get that experience to be right. that person. Like, look at them. Like, they are there for a reason. Yeah, exactly. Even I think, yeah, and I think I see that too sometimes with um, with people who come in. And sometimes you can just kind of tell that maybe they were, like, at the top of their school. Mm -hmm. And they're used to being um, cast as, like, the main, the main character. character. And they're used to dancing so much. And then it's kind of a shock for them to go into a company and they're not used in everything. Mm -hmm. Um And, and that's just the way that it is. it is. And even with, like, the full company members, it all the performances, it, it changes you, yeah. who is, The principal, you know, like, it doesn't... Yeah, It's not so, necessarily, like, I'm the best and I'm just going to do everything. No. Exactly. Like, the casting changes. Other people are featured in other performances. Like, sometimes you're dancing a lot. Like, you're mm -hmm. on stage the entire time. And then other times you're used maybe just a little One bit. One piece. Yeah. And so that's something that you have to 
like recognize that that's going to happen and mm-hmm. it doesn't mean that you're a good dancer, you're a bad dancer, anything. Exactly. That's just the way that company life is and it just has to do with like the performances that they want to put on and how they want to portray it and kind of trying to keep the fairness of like using all of your dancers and um, yeah, making right. sure that everyone is valued and, and Totally everything. agree. Yeah. Do you think there is a line between also like being an apprentice and over doing that apprenticeship because over doing the apprenticeship I, what do you mean by no, that by like companies uh-huh. um, taking advantage of uh-huh. that apprenticeship uh-huh. did you feel a little bit that way or no like did you feel like it was fair I feel like because you know yeah I get it I do get it Um, I think that as long as companies uh, have like limits on how many dancers they bring on as apprentices or something like that. I think that that generally keeps it pretty, um, pretty fair. fair. Or if they also have like Eugene Ballet, for example, um, they typically have like around six apprentices or so. I mean, aspirants, we call them aspirants here. They typically have around six aspirants um, per season. And uh, we usually have like a maximum of two years. Okay. for that um, because they specifically do not want to take advantage and they they wish that they could you know hire everyone and pay everyone but they know it's that it's much money it's it's yeah it's a lot and there's just not enough funding for that but we yeah. do need extra people to help create the performances the that we want to create and then at the same time it gives those younger dancers the experience of company life and things to add to their resume So to keep it kind of even, you know, you kind of set a two-year limit. So then after that, it's either like we have a spot and we can bring you on or Or we don't have a spot. We're so sorry, but, you know, we'll give you a good reference if you can go somewhere else and find something somewhere else. So then that way they're not just like keeping dancers and like building their their expectations and hopes um, for something that's just ultimately not going to happen. I actually like that. Yeah. Because, you know, like there is a lot of companies where you just... Yeah. The forever apprentice and he's like I know or it's just such a large program mm-hmm. too that like you you just like don't even feel like you're seen yes. you know like you're just filling in all of these spots on the stage but like ultimately do they see you as an individual yeah. dancer that they might bring on like maybe not yeah <laughs> talking a little bit about these have you ever found yourself thinking for example of a role or something that you thought you were ready for and now you are like I get it why I was no part of that. I don't know. I kind of feel like I have the opposite problem. Okay. Like I just, I feel like I look at, um, I'm, I'm getting better, but as I first joined the company, I would just look at uh, like the principal dancers and the dancers that have been there for a while, just mm-hmm. kind of like with star eyes, <laughs> you know, like yes, just looking yes. at them like, wow, they have so much experience. Like look at the character that they bring to the role and like, You can tell that they have so much behind their dancing, too. And, like, I just, I want to be like that. And I would feel intimidated, um, kind of, to, like, try to also do what they're doing. Okay. Um, And I don't know why (laughs) I had that approach to it. That's just kind of, I don't know. That was just kind of my thought process of just, like, wow, this is crazy. Maybe it was because I didn't get into, like, serious ballet training until I was a little older. Mm -hmm. I feel like sometimes people start like their serious training a little bit younger, like like, mm -hmm. maybe like 12 or something. But um, because I was a little bit older, I feel like maybe I was a little bit further behind. And so I had further to climb before I was ready to take on these roles. Um, But each year I feel like you get more and more experience and more confidence. confidence. Yeah. And more opportunities to... um, to grow that a little bit more too. I mean, I seen it. For example, I I mean, I know you for what? Like <laughs> almost Oh no. Like 8 9 years? Something like that. Yeah. It's crazy. Uh-huh. I cannot believe that it's so <laughs> <I know>. long. <laughs> But something that for example I remember about you is that you were always in the role. Hmm. Like I don't feel like you were afraid of showing what you were thinking of doing in the uh-huh. particular moment. You uh-huh. know, for example, for example for me, I struggled a lot uh-huh. with that from very young age. I feel mm-hmm. like right now I'm getting better to mm-hmm. understanding what the role is. Yeah. But like, 
I feel like with you, I always <laughs> saw like you knew what this part is what I'm doing. You mm -hmm. know, like I'm that person. Like I'm mm -hmm. not Haley anymore. I don't know. You know what I mean? That's a very nice compliment. Thank no. you very much. And like, for example, like again, I saw you what, a week ago, two weeks mm -hmm. ago. Mm -hmm. And you have this duet. Yeah. I feel like I saw so much growth into like, because oh. when was the last performance I saw you? Probably like a, a year or so because of COVID Something, and everything else. Yeah, yeah. So I was yeah, like, it was wow, like, mm -hmm. I see it. Like that duet was so good. Love like it. I love seeing you there. I love yeah. the full performance. It was like, mm -hmm. wow. What What did you feel like, for example, going into that place that you are like just two dancers in this main stage? Yeah, I mean, that was a really special piece to be able to do. That one specifically was choreographed by, um, by Susie, who is our resident choreographer. And so I have been able to work with her a lot so I've danced in a lot of her pieces which has been really great and she's just like a really nice person to be able to work with and she like really will work with you instead of just choreographing something on you okay. you know the difference yeah. um, and so she's just really nice to work with in that way and that piece in particular she called it penumbra which is um The definition of that is basically that is the like the outer edge of a shadow that's mm -hmm. like a little unclear, um, but like you see it, but it's just like it's a little unclear. And so she had explained to us like she was creating that duet kind of for everyone else's interpretation uh -huh. of it. Um, so like however you wanted to view it, but I wanted to ask about that, but yeah, come yeah. But then also um, for us to find what we want our characters to be to and me. like how it relates to us. So like, you know, she like gave examples. I think in the program of like, uh -huh. you know, you could see this as like w what did as you a, saw it as? What did I see it as? I saw it as us being the same person. So okay. we were kind of like. Um, like Sarah Stockwell, the other dancer that I did it with, she was wearing like a like a reddish purple color costume, and then I was wearing a gray costume, and so I kind of felt like I was, um, in a way, like her shadow, but okay. kind of maybe like um, I don't know if it's like I am her imperfections or like I am how like other people see her, some but something like we are two iterations of the same person. So that was kind of how I took the approach of it. And that's that was my feeling when I was dancing the piece on stage and in the rehearsals. Cool. Yeah. That's exactly what I saw. Okay, that's cool. I, I, that's what I saw. I told, that's fun that we had the same yeah, like, what idea. Yeah, what I saw it was like piece. two people who are the same. Mm -hmm. But for me, it was like, you know how you have different personas as you are like, a mm -hmm. compilation of a lot of things yeah. in your personality. So it's yeah. kind of like those moments where you are like together, uh -huh. but maybe your brain is going this way, but your mind, mm -hmm. your body is going this way. So uh, it's still yeah. the same person, uh -huh. but you are like fighting into like connecting again. Uh -huh. So it's kind of like because the piece starts you guys together. That makes sense, yeah. And then uh -huh. you, you kind of have like a little bit of differences mm -hmm. between. Mm -hmm. But it's like, you know, like that moment where yeah, you are but like, we would like this keep person. Back together. Exactly. And then yeah. you ended up together. It's like mm -hmm. in unison of like, okay, I believe and I know mm -hmm. who I am. Yeah. I love that. To be honest, I like, like that. Yeah. It was a beautiful piece. I mm -hmm. love everything about it. And I love seeing you like, I, again, I saw all the growth and I was yeah. like, Wow. That was fun. Yeah. I yeah, that was a really great piece. I'm so happy. And I'm so happy that you could come see that performance too. No, it was, was so really so good. Yeah. <laughs> What do you think are like important qualities in a dancer to have? Oh, so many. <laughs> Honestly, <laughs> yes. so many. I it's kind of funny though. I feel like um if you had asked me that maybe a couple years ago, or maybe maybe more than a couple years ago. Time passes, like, much quicker than I think. Um, <laughs> if you had asked me when I was younger, I probably would have said, like, more physical qualities. Okay. Like, more about, like, technique. You have to have your like leg that. here and, like... Uh -huh. Something like that. Like, like, you have to be flexible. You have to have, like, ample turnout and, like, be able to, you know, have, like, a lot of, you know, control or whatever it is. Um, and I think also, like, that is still kind of true. Yeah. Um, but less about that and more about um, kind of like the the mental approach to it, I think, is mm -hmm. kind of a little more strong in my answer for that now of just like, 
your approach to um, to your work, like in a day to day sort of a sense, like how you arrive and how you show up and how you are there yes. for like class and rehearsals and how you important. it's really important um, because that it's not only your experience but it's everybody else's experience too because you're ultimately you're there working as a team a group it's not mm-hmm. yeah you're a full group you're not just there for yourself um, so you have to be like very mindful of that um, so I think that that is very important is just like how just like how you are um, in your company life. I think that's really important. Totally and agree. then, yeah. And then everything, like all your focus that you bring to your performances and like your characters and everything that you're trying to tell in the story, whether it's a story ballet or it's not a story mm-hmm. ballet, it's still, you still have to have everything in your, in your mind behind that. And I think that that is really um, something that makes the difference between just like a student or someone who just like, kind of just likes dancing and somebody who is a professional and really wants to like... Who's an artist. Yeah, an artist. And just like really bring that performance and make people feel the performance as well. I think that's the the biggest I totally agree thing. with you. Yeah. It's very important. And I mm-hmm. really like what you said about like it's a collective thing, it's a group. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Because like, yes, it's, it's kind of... <laughs> somebody was saying it, I think in one of the past episodes, uh-huh. the... Ballet is a collective and an individual thing at the same time. Yeah. Where you have to dance collectively and you have mm-hmm. to be part of that, mm-hmm. but you also have to be a little bit selfish, selfish. so that you can I was grow. about to say selfish. I think it can also be a very selfish um, form because you're, you know, you have to be very in tune with yourself yes. and you have to be very focused on yourself um, in order to, you know, like make the performance as good as you want it to be. Mm-hmm. It's a very like, yeah self-focused thing so like it's funny that it's you know it can be both things it, it, it can is be collective things. and it can also be selfish totally. um, but like you need the both of those things to create like what it is all together mm-hmm. how yeah how do you keep yourself inspired like have you find things outside ballet or mm-hmm. outside your routine that keeps you wanting to come back to this <laughs> or like you know because sometimes uh-huh. there is things that i'm like i cannot do ballet today yeah but like I need to do something else to like, yeah. oh, I, I want to, mm-hmm. you know? Yeah, I think that, first of all, everybody goes through phases and that's totally fine to be, you know, kind of like have a slump mm-hmm. or feel like a little unmotivated. Like that is very normal. It's very natural. And it's OK to like have those feelings, even if it's something that like normally you are very passionate about. Like I feel like recognizing that it is OK to like be uninspired sometimes. Um Like, that's very important. (laughs) Um, But, yeah, I think it is also really important to have things outside of ballet to keep you motivated to go back or just keep you motivated. um, Maybe not necessarily to go back to ballet, but just, like, motivated in a way that, like, you still feel, like, happy and, like, energized to, like, keep going with everything. Mm -hmm. Um, So whether, like... That's obviously different for everyone, but like I like to like learn new skills, Okay. for example. So like I just kind of like to try a lot of different things. So sometimes I'm like my other inspirations are like cooking new meals or like baking okay. something different or sometimes it's... Um, I don't know, like crocheting. Like I've oh, taught really? myself how to crochet like through YouTube videos. And like, ah, so sometimes I, I do that. Yeah, it's just like anything else that's different for me. Like I feel like that really stimulates my brain in a way that's like it, it makes me feel like I'm still learning things and still growing. And so sometimes if I feel like I'm kind of stuck in a rut with ballet and I kind of feel for whatever reason that I'm just like I'm just doing the same thing like every single mm-hmm. day. Um, so sometimes I'll just change my uh, change my focus a little bit and um, in my downtime and in my free time I'll just work on something new and something different and so in that way it kind of fulfills like the need for me to you know be doing something new and like expanding just like in a different way and so then I feel more comfortable going back to ballet where maybe we are just like rehearsing for the mm-hmm. same ballet, which is just the way that it goes. Yeah, it and goes, you just yeah. kind of like you keep rehearsing and tweaking little things and cleaning it. And, and it can be monotonous sometimes. Um, mm-hmm. But, yeah, you just kind of figure out what you need in order to keep that process um, not so monotonous. Yeah, no, I like yeah. it. I like it a lot. Yeah. 
do you have you find yourself like having maybe moments of anxiety about like for example a piece <laughs> or like mm -hmm. in the life in general with this type of artwork yeah i think so i mean the anxiety in specific pieces i'd say it's just because you want to do so well mm -hmm. um, and you really want to impress maybe it's like an outside choreographer that you haven't worked with before but um they're like a bigger name in the ballet world and you know that they've worked with all of these famous um, these famous yeah. dancers that like you've seen on social media and you're like you just want to impress them and mm -hmm. be like i can also be really good like I don't know where that comes from, but like that's just the anxiety that sometimes that can bring on. Um, and yeah, that can be stressful when you're dealing with that. It but is. then you just kind of have to remind yourself that everybody, everybody has that. Everybody has those Everybody moments. has those moments when they're thinking of those things. And all you can do is just show your work ethic, I think, is the most important thing. And like, I agree. And put in all of your technique and everything that you have like you know, worked so hard for so many years to obtain. Um, so, yeah, all that you can do is just give it your all and show that you are dedicated to that. And I think that that is, you know, I think that that is something that is impressive to anyone. Going you know? back to those qualities that we were yeah, talking about. Exactly. Going back to those qualities, I think it's really important because it shows that you're dedicated to your art form and that you really do want to, like, improve the pieces and show, like, a really good performance. And I think that that's that's impressive to anyone yes i, I think like, that that's yeah. yeah what people want to see sometimes for example there is a lot of people that you see in a company yeah. like big companies or things and you're like how this person is there because mm -hmm. sometimes you are like you know like probably their technique or something is not equal to what the company usually represents yeah, or maybe sure, you know sure. yeah. but what i think sometimes is like that person is there for a single reason maybe mm. their work ethic their attitude mm -hmm. or how they approach things Mm -hmm. It's so unique and so a pleasure to work with mm -hmm. that they are always going to be higher. Right. And it just like it elevates the entire company uh -huh. in a different way. That's like equally as important. Yes. Yeah. You know, so you need those people yeah. who, are, who are so happy, uh -huh. like so mm -hmm. like wanting to be here. Yeah. Sometimes people, for example, uh, when you're teaching or something, <laughs> you know, like sometimes little kids, you are like, oh. <laughs> it's so hard because you're not like like you have it like yeah. you just give me yeah this 10% uh -huh. you know and then you teach for example adults mm -hmm. that might not even do it right but right. you see that willingness and that mm -hmm. and like hunger for yeah. learning you're like yeah. wow what am I enjoying this so much right. it's because it's, they're having the attitude yeah. of like happiness it's so like, funny because I think that that like Throughout all of time, I think that that stands true because mm -hmm. I remember like as a kid, I remember teachers kind of giving those talks in uh -huh. class of just like, you guys, like, I know that you're tired, like you've had a long day at school and I know that you're yep. like exhausted, but like you need to push, like you need to do this, you need to do that. And so like now as an older dancer, um, I totally understand where that you was coming it, yeah. from. I totally get it. And it's so funny. And I see that now, like in students, since I also work in the academy, I don't teach with the academy, but I like have the opportunity to see the classes mm -hmm. and I'm friends with a lot of the teachers and everything. And they kind of express the same thing in that, like the kids, like sometimes they just want to like pull it out of them. Like they see so much, but like, you know, they're, they're coming to class after like a full day at school or they're doing other activities mm -hmm. or they do other sports. Um, and so they just kind of, you know, they they express that same thing. So it's kind of funny. Mm -hmm. But then the adults, like you said, they're just like, they're just happy to be there because mm -hmm. that's kind of like what they have picked for themselves. Like yes. they have actively chosen to take that ballet class with you and so they are there to work um yep. whereas kids i feel like sometimes it's not always maybe their choice, their choice or yeah or they're like their feelings change a lot you know what they're interested in it might like change from week to week and so like sometimes it's harder for them to like have that focus and that like that push in class yep yeah totally agree and <laughs> <laughs> uh, i wanted to jump a little bit yeah uh, about injuries oh. Uh -huh. <laughs> have you have anything that you are like, what is this happening to me? Yeah. Yeah. That's a, <laughs> it just happens. Um, you kind of just take them as they come, the injuries. Yeah. Um, I feel like mostly I'm okay. I kind of have like a chronic 
ankle thing. Ankle thing. I remember. I, I was going to ask you. Yeah. So I still have like a chronic kind of impingement sort of feeling in my ankle and I try to take care of it. And like sometimes there are good days and it feels really good. And sometimes there are just days where it's just like really crappy <laughs> and it just hurts. And you're just, you just get so frustrated because like everything that you do, something hurts and you just feel like you can't push yourself. You can and you just like you can't dance in the way that you want to dance because of this injury that you're feeling. Um, and that's just really frustrating sometimes. And you just, you know, you kind of just have to take those days in stride and be like, you know, like I I know that it's really bad today, but I know that it's not really bad every single day. And so I'll just go home and I'll do like some PT exercises and I'll, you know, take my like fascial scraper and like mm. scrape out my ankle and try to make did, it feel better. Did you have surgery for it? I had a surgery back in... Because oh, I remember it? about this, right? Yeah, that was back in New York when I had a surgery. So that was like maybe like 10 years ago when I had the surgery. Um, that was for like a extra bone in the ankle. In the ankle. <laughs> yeah, and so that, <laughs> um, that definitely helped for a while. And I don't know, it's hard to know if it's like the same injury or if it's kind of like a byproduct of okay. that. Um, you know, I've had, I've gone in to see some doctors and it's like, it's nothing obvious basically yeah. is what we've um, concluded. Um, so, and in a way I feel like that's more frustrating because if like they can see an obvious issue and be like, well, it's... Fix like, it. Yeah. Yeah. There's like, I feel like it's easier to find a fix if you know exactly what the problem is. But this is just kind of you know, something that I kind of just deal with. And um, so it's frustrating in that way. But, you know, you kind of just learn um, how to take care of yourself mm -hmm. um, in a way that will allow you to keep dancing and keep rehearsing and everything. Um, so, yeah. So for me specifically, that is my ankle. It's your ankle. <laughs> um, but for, you know, sometimes like other random things might happen, like other random injuries might happen. But, you know, if that has to take you out for a day or two, that's okay. It's you okay. know, yes. you just like communicate with your, um, like whoever it is that's running yeah. rehearsals or anything. And like that can feel scary sometimes, especially if you're a newer dancer, you're like, I don't want them to know that I'm injured. Like I want to do everything. <laughs> yes. You want to, you want to show That right. You're there. Right. Exactly. And so I think it, I mean, I understand that mindset because I also used to have that mindset, mm -hmm. but I also like now I, I recognize that you do need to be able to take care of your body because if you'd like take one day off now, that might save you from like having to take like, month. yeah, to take like a month off, like to recover from this injury because like you pushed through something that you should not have pushed through, you know? Yes. Yeah. Do you have like any aspirations of what you want to accomplish in the next coming years? You know, I don't know, maybe <laughs> it's a promotion, maybe it's uh -huh. a role, maybe is. I just want to keep pushing myself. <laughs> yeah. I think I feel like each year I am able to push myself a little bit more and like gain more confidence. Mm -hmm. I feel like that's kind of been my like my thing <laughs> as well, a person is just like yeah like just like trying to gain more and more confidence and like feeling like I belong like mm -hmm. where I am and like I have gained like the position that I have like for a reason like I deserve it yes and so I think that continuing to push to gain more confidence and just like that comfortability in like performing larger roles I think I would like to Yeah, keep pushing that for myself. I don't necessarily have like an exact role or you don't something have, like, that I'm a like. Dream role to be like, I want to be this person in this. No, not yeah. really. I mean, it's also tough because we do like so many different performances yes. each year, and like some of the new performances that we do, like I'm not familiar with um, like the the specific roles that um, mm -hmm. that like Tony will have in the pieces. Um, So it's hard to know exactly, like, yes, I want to be this character in this ballet yeah. and everything. Um, I just really like, uh, yeah, just getting the opportunity to be in those larger roles, whatever they are, whether they're, like, soloist roles or principal roles. Like, I really love the opportunity when I get put into those that I can, um, like, embrace the character and the choreography and just, like, push myself to be even better. Good. Yeah. That is kind of like what we all kind of hope for you know like i think so 
yeah keeping the how do you say one thing I don't know like it's like yeah it's just like you just want to grow you just like yes. you're craving it you're just like you really want to push yourself and be better yes yeah yes and I feel like that's what every artist should kind of like feel of I think so and I well yeah I think if you don't have that then like what is your motivation yeah like what do you keep doing yeah like yeah like why are you just mm-hmm. doing the same thing if you're not like motivated to grow <laughs> Do you have, like, a show that you are like, this is the best show I ever done? <laughs> um, one show that still stands out to me is... It's actually the show that we were supposed to do right before COVID stopped oh, everything. Really? Yeah. So it didn't end up being the exact same show. Mm-hmm. Like, we changed some, uh, like, one of the pieces that we were performing... But we kept the the main piece that I was excited about, and that was Edward Liang's Age of Innocence. Okay. Um, and that piece, I was cast in a padida that was like a really beautiful padida. Like the music was just really beautiful, and the costuming was really beautiful, and everything. Like in my opinion, like everything about it was just like wow. Like, like I just like I just love this so much. Like the costumes, the choreography, the music, the feeling, the lighting, like everything about it. I was just like, this piece is just so beautiful. And and I got to do one of the potatoes, which were like one of the featured pieces of that um of the piece that we were doing. And so like that felt really special to be able to do. And so we were working on that right before the pandemic shut everything down. We were just like a couple weeks out from the performance and like we just had to stop and we were all devastated. And I was devastated because that was actually my first year as a full company member with the company. And I was like, wow, like this is really great. Like this is kind of like a debut for like a really like a larger role. Yeah. And I was so excited to do it. And then like everything Yes. Stop. Like it was, it was taken away, <laughs> like right in front of my eyes, and I was like devastated. Um, but then we were lucky enough to bring it back uh, last year. Actually, it was like a year ago, maybe even like today. It was last <laughs> year, like last year on Easter. That was okay. like our our weekend performances. It was the whole program was called Heaven and Earth, but Age of okay. Innocence was one of the pieces Whatever. that we were performing. Um, and so we got to bring it back and work on it and perform it. And so that was like a very special kind of like full circle moment of just like being able to bring back that piece and perform it. Um, and it was just really special. And I had a lot of family that actually came out to watch it and it was, yeah, it was just like everything about it was just like. This is good. It's kind of like a good confirmation of like, yes, I do love what I'm doing. Good. Like, it feels like I'm getting places and like I'm doing, I'm how, doing well. <laughs> yeah. How important do you think is the connection between the audience and the dancer? Like, for example, in performances like that. Yeah, I think it's really important because you can feel the audience when you're performing. Like, do you think that too? Yeah, like yeah. When you're like, performing, you can totally see like if a night. Uh-huh. Uh, for example, like, yeah, if you do the same performance, let's say mm-hmm. three nights in a row, and yeah. like one night somebody laughs at that joke, and uh-huh. then the next day they don't laugh at the same joke, yeah. it can like, mm-hmm. you're it like, can am break I not you doing or make you? Well? Like, <laughs> like, yeah, like, what's going wrong? <laughs> like, uh-huh. Yeah, so like you can really feel the audience. I feel like the energy that they bring, whether, you know, whether the piece is like funny or emotional uh-huh. or like just, you know, like just applause or like whatever it is, like you can just, you feel the energy that the audience brings. And I feel like that really elevates your performance too, because you know that they're there and you want to like, it's like kind of like in a way you just want to show off. Yes. Like you want to show off everything that you've been working on. You want to put on the best performance. You want to make them feel the things. Um, And like, you know, like really, emotional performances or something that's sad like if you see audience members afterwards and they tell you that like they cried you're Uh like yes Yes. (laughs) which like feels kind of weird to you know like be happy that they cried but like that means that you've succeeded in your job right and so that's kind of like kind of like I feel one of the main reasons why you want to perform is like to properly try to convey the story and make the audience feel what you're feeling or yeah not take the satisfaction uh-huh. of like 
kind of what you say, you made them feel something. You uh -huh. took them out of their life. Yeah. And that is just gold. Yeah. Like, I mean, that's why they, they buy the tickets exactly. to go see a show. And it, like, it does it like it stops everything. Like, that's kind of the goal. You just want mm. everything else to stop and you want them to be so immersed in the moment, just like you are. And so if you have accomplished that, then I feel like you can be satisfied exactly. with your performance. Exactly. Yeah. Uh -huh. That's all you need. Yeah. That's all you need. Mm -hmm. Just to finish, how would you inspire any young dancer, any person to do what they want to do uh -huh. or like to dance I know this is the toughest questions but I've been it's crazy I've been asking it to yeah. everybody yeah because it's so uh -huh. fun to have like all these different mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. responses I think it's just so important for people to just give it a shot just go for it just try it out um, and if you feel like it's something that you do really want to do then just like you just have to fully immerse yourself in it like if you are just learning something new like when I first was getting into ballet and I didn't know that much about it I just like discovered all of these things and I was on YouTube like <laughs> almost like all day long I would be like watching all of these different companies that I had just learned about and like watching them do all of these different variations and pas de deux and like just really fully just like trying to teach myself about this new world that I had just discovered. Um, and I feel like that's what it takes is to just truly like immerse yourself and kind of like make it your, like your main focus of like every day to really um, find your passion to see if that's really something that you do want to pursue. And I think that that's, I don't know, for me, that's what it took, you know, just to like, see it even more like I was introduced and so then I like really started like researching more and learning more about it and then it just kind of like whisked me away <laughs> into like sure. the life that I have now and so I feel like if somebody else has that same approach like if it if you get more into it maybe you might discover that like oh I kind of like it but I don't know but if you have any sort of feeling that like I do really like this this is really interesting to me like I think I would really like to keep doing this, then then I feel like that's the push that you need that'll like... Just, just jump into the pool. Yeah, just like jump into it. Yeah, don't dip your toe, jump in. Good. That's my advice. Yeah, no. thank you so much. <laughs> yeah. Thank you for doing this. Thank, thank you for you. coming. Yeah, thank you very much. It was very exciting. Hopefully yeah. everybody likes it. And if yeah. you guys do, please don't forget to rate us, <laughs> give a five-star review or whatever you want. Watch us on YouTube if you want to see the video, if you want to see your faces. And thank you so much. Thank you, yeah. Haley. Thank you very much, Gustavo. Thanks for listening to Beyond the Mirror. If you enjoyed this podcast, please hit follow or subscribe so you can stay up to date on new episodes. Until next time.